$23.8 billion. That's not just a number, it's the colossal investment NASA has poured into the space launch system, the backbone of America's ambitious return to the moon. After years of development, countless tests, and only a single flight to show for it, this massive rocket program now stands at the brink of cancellation. In a shocking development that's sending shockwaves through the aerospace industry, Boeing, the primary SLS contractor, has just summoned 800 employees to an emergency meeting. The message was clear and devastating. Prepare for layoffs. 400 jobs could vanish by April, with thousands more at risk across the supply chain. This isn't just about a rocket, it's about America's position in the new space race. As China accelerates its own lunar ambitions and private companies like SpaceX revolutionize access to space at a fraction of the cost. So what happened to the rocket that was supposed to carry America back to the moon? Was Elon Musk right all along about commercial alternatives? And what does this mean for the future of human space exploration? Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we break down the biggest developments in space technology and exploration. Let's dive right in. When Boeing executives called an emergency meeting with just one hour's notice, the 800 SLS team members knew something was seriously wrong. The room fell silent as David Duche, Boeing's vice president and SLS program manager, delivered the crushing news. Their contract could end by March and 400 jobs would vanish by April. You could feel the tension in the air as decades of aerospace careers suddenly hung in the balance. This will require 60-day notices of involuntary layoffs, a Boeing spokesperson later confirmed, the corporate language unable to mask the human impact. Behind each of those 400 positions are engineers, technicians, and specialists who've dedicated their careers to America's return to the moon. And this is just the beginning. Thousands more jobs at Northrop Grumman, Aerojet Rocketdyne, and smaller suppliers across America now face an uncertain future. Boeing doesn't drop bombshells like this based on rumors or hunches. Their leadership has clearly seen something coming, something big enough to risk demoralizing their entire workforce. Multiple sources inside NASA and the White House reveal an intense behind-the-scenes battle over SLS's future, with the upcoming Trump administration budget proposal hanging over the program like the Sword of Damocles. NASA's acting administrator, Janet Petro, has been fighting desperately to keep SLS alive at least through Artemis III, enough to fulfill America's promise of returning astronauts to the lunar surface. But she's facing an uphill battle against a damning economic reality that's become impossible to ignore. Each SLS launch costs over $2 billion, without even counting ground operations or payload costs. To truly understand how staggering that figure is, consider this. For the cost of a single SLS launch, NASA could fund 20 Falcon Heavy missions or operate the entire James Webb Space Telescope for nearly two years. The economics are brutal, and they've become increasingly difficult to justify as SpaceX and Blue Origin continue demonstrating what commercial innovation can achieve at a fraction of the cost. It's like watching a luxury ocean liner compete against modern speedboats, remarked one former NASA official who requested anonymity. SLS was designed for a different era of spaceflight before reusability changed everything. The cost issue becomes even more painful when you consider that Boeing and other SLS contractors operate under cost plus contracts, a model that essentially pays companies for spending more time and money rather than finding efficiencies. While this arrangement was standard for decades, Elon Musk's SpaceX introduced fixed price contracts that fundamentally changed the game. The contrast couldn't be more stark. As SLS costs continued climbing, SpaceX was busy developing Starship, potentially more powerful, fully reusable, and dramatically cheaper to operate. Yet SLS still holds one critical advantage that commercial alternatives can't currently match. It was designed from the ground up to carry humans beyond Earth orbit. The path to certifying Starship or other commercial rockets for crewed lunar missions remains long and uncertain. Human rating a spacecraft means proving it can keep astronauts alive through every conceivable emergency, a process that typically takes years of meticulous testing. People don't fully appreciate what it takes to human rate a spacecraft, explains Dr. Maria Sanchez, a former NASA safety engineer. Every system needs redundancy. Every failure mode must be analyzed. 
Every material must be scrutinized for toxicity or flammability. It's extraordinarily complex. Starship shows incredible promise, but its ambitious design relies on something never before attempted. Multiple in-orbit refueling operations, at least 10 of them, for a typical lunar mission. Each refueling represents a high-stakes operation that must work flawlessly before NASA would even consider trusting astronaut lives to the system. This certification challenge creates an agonizing dilemma for decision-makers. Continue pouring billions into the enormously expensive but partially certified SLS, or accept a potential years-long gap in America's ability to send astronauts beyond Earth orbit, a gap that China seems eager to fill. The Chinese space program continues making steady progress toward their own lunar landing program, free from the funding uncertainties and political whiplash that plague NASA. Their Long March 9 rocket, while less powerful than SLS or Starship, benefits from consistent political support and funding. Chinese officials have confidently announced plans for a crewed lunar landing before 2030. And unlike America's stop-start approach, they've demonstrated remarkable consistency in executing their space ambitions. We're in a space race whether we acknowledge it or not, warns former astronaut Terry Wilcutt. If we cancel SLS without a ready alternative, we're essentially ceding the moon to China for the next decade. That's not just a symbolic loss. It has serious implications for resource utilization, cislunar presence, and international partnerships. The geopolitical stakes add tremendous pressure to what might otherwise be a straightforward financial decision. Losing the next lunar landing to a strategic competitor would represent a seismic shift in global perceptions of American technological leadership, a domain the United States has dominated since the iconic Apollo landings. Behind the scenes, Boeing's dramatic announcement serves another purpose. It creates immediate political pressure to continue the program. By publicly highlighting the economic impact across multiple states, they've effectively activated a network of congressional representatives who will fight tooth and nail to preserve jobs in their districts. It's a time-honored strategy in aerospace, notes Dr. Howard Miller, a defense policy analyst. By spreading contracts across many states, these programs create their own political immune system. Representatives from Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida will go to extraordinary lengths to protect these high-paying jobs, regardless of the program's overall merits. This political reality has saved troubled aerospace programs before. The F-35 fighter jet program, despite enormous cost overruns, proved nearly impossible to cancel because its manufacturing touched 45 states, creating an almost impenetrable political shield. SLS benefits from a similar, if smaller, geographical distribution of economic benefits. Meanwhile, many NASA veterans argue that constantly changing direction actually costs more in the long run. Kirk Shireman, who manages the Orion program at Lockheed Martin, voiced this frustration at a recent space industry conference, his passion evident as he addressed employees facing yet another existential threat to their life's work. The fastest way to get humans back on the moon is to stay the course, he insisted, the weariness of decades of program cancellations evident in his voice. If you throw programs away every four years and start over, that's probably the slowest and most expensive approach possible. We've been down this road before, and it leads nowhere. His argument resonates with many inside NASA who've watched promising programs die on the vine. From the ambitious Constellation program to the Space Exploration Initiative of the 1990s. Each cancellation wasted billions in development costs and pushed America's return to deep space further into the future. The human toll is equally devastating. Brilliant engineers forced to abandon projects they've dedicated years to. Institutional knowledge scattered to the winds. Despite the uncertainty clouding SLS's future, dedicated teams continue working toward Artemis II. The first crewed mission, now scheduled for April 2025, after engineers discovered concerning heat shield erosion during the uncrewed Artemis I mission. Inside NASA's massive vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center, technicians meticulously stack segments of the twin solid rocket boosters that will provide 75% of the thrust needed to escape Earth's gravity. There's a certain heartbreak that comes with building something that might never fly, 
confesses one technician who requested anonymity, glancing up at the massive rocket components towering above. But we keep going because this matters. Getting humans back to the moon matters. Once fully assembled, the complete SLS will roll out to Launch Complex 39B, the same hallowed ground that launched Apollo missions, for critical tanking tests. These tests will verify that the rocket can safely hold cryogenic propellants and operate through the complex countdown sequence. Every step requires meticulous attention to detail, with lives ultimately hanging in the balance. There's a whack-a-mole every day where we find problems, fix problems, and move on, admits Charlie Thompson, NASA's SLS launch director, the stress lines around his eyes betraying the immense pressure he operates under. That's just the reality of preparing the most powerful rocket ever built for human spaceflight. As Washington debates SLS's fate, three potential paths have emerged, each reflecting different visions for America's future in space. Continuing SLS through at least Artemis IV maintains program continuity and leverages the $23.8 billion already invested, but at extraordinary ongoing costs that many consider unsustainable in the long term. Alternatively, canceling SLS and fully embracing commercial alternatives like SpaceX Starship could dramatically reduce costs and potentially accelerate lunar exploration, if the technical challenges can be overcome quickly enough. This approach represents a fundamental bet on commercial innovation, though it introduces significant near-term uncertainty. A third path, completing Artemis 2 and 3 with SLS while simultaneously developing commercial alternatives for later missions, attempts to balance continuity with cost-effectiveness. This compromise approach would maintain America's lunar momentum while transitioning to more sustainable architectures, though it requires threading a difficult political and budgetary needle. The decision ultimately transcends rocket specifications or budget line items. It reflects America's core values and ambitions in space. Is returning to the moon primarily about planting flags and claiming territory, developing new technologies, establishing permanent infrastructure, preparing for eventual Mars missions? How we answer these questions will determine not just which rocket carries our astronauts, but what kind of future we're building beyond Earth. As the aerospace community holds its collective breath, waiting for an official decision, the clock continues ticking. SpaceX launches more Starship test flights. China advances their lunar program. Boeing prepares potential layoff notices. And inside the vehicle assembly building, dedicated teams continue stacking booster segments, driven by the hope that America's tallest rocket will soon carry astronauts back to the place we once walked, then abandoned half a century ago. This critical moment for America's space program isn't just about rockets and budgets, it's about vision. While SLS may represent the old guard approach to space exploration, its cancellation without a ready alternative could leave America grounded during the next giant leap forward. The coming months will reveal whether NASA chooses fiscal pragmatism or program continuity, whether commercial innovation or traditional aerospace will carry our astronauts back to the lunar surface. Whichever path America takes, one thing remains clear. The decisions made today will echo through decades of future exploration, determining who leads humanity's expansion into the cosmos. What do you think? Should NASA continue with SLS despite the enormous costs or fully embrace commercial alternatives like Starship? The future of American space exploration hangs in the balance and the clock is ticking. If you found this analysis valuable, Help us continue bringing you the most important developments in space exploration. Hit that subscribe button to join our Elon Musk 24-hour community, drop your thoughts in the comments below, and share this video with anyone interested in the future of space exploration. Every subscriber helps us deliver more in-depth coverage of humanity's greatest adventure. Until next time, keep looking up. The next chapter of lunar exploration is being written right now. $23.8 billion. That's not just a number, it's the colossal investment NASA has poured into the space launch system, the backbone of America's ambitious return to the moon. After years of development, countless tests, and only a single flight to show for it, this massive rocket program now stands at the brink of cancellation.
In a shocking development that's sending shockwaves through the aerospace industry, Boeing, the primary SLS contractor, has just summoned 800 employees to an emergency meeting. The message was clear and devastating. Prepare for layoffs. 400 jobs could vanish by April, with thousands more at risk across the supply chain. This isn't just about a rocket, it's about America's position in the new space race. As China accelerates its own lunar ambitions and private companies like SpaceX revolutionize access to space at a fraction of the cost. So what happened to the rocket that was supposed to carry America back to the moon? Was Elon Musk right all along about commercial alternatives? And what does this mean for the future of human space exploration? Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we break down the biggest developments in space technology and exploration. Let's dive right in. When Boeing executives